What's up guys, I believe that if you're a natural lifter, you have a lot more strength than you give yourself credit for. As a matter of fact, every single one of you has a hidden strength potential that is yet to be tapped. And the reason why you've not unlocked the strength is because you're following inefficient, minimal systems that are not allowing you to maximize your natural potential. So in this video, I'm going to give you three life-changing strategies that's going to allow you to get stupid strong, stronger than some steroid users even. And there's really no video on YouTube that's going to talk about this except for the one you're about to see. So let's dive into this. So number one, before you can become a motherfucking super saint, you have to realize where this hidden strength is coming from. And of course, this stems from what we call the Golgi tendon organ, which is basically a mechanism that prevents you from lifting too much weight. You see, let's say your deadlift former max is 500 pounds, right? And you attempted to pull 700 off the floor. What do you think would happen? The bar would not budge. Why would the bar not budge? Because of the Golgi tendon organ. It's a mechanism that immediately sends a signal to your brain saying, do not lift this weight, it's going to tear your muscles, it's going to tear your joints, it's going to get you injured. So, in theory, if we can desensitize the Golgi tendon organ, we'll be able to lift more weights. I think you'll all agree with me, right? So, the aim of this video is to teach you how do you desensitize the Golgi tendon organ. And there's three tips. Number one, start employing grip training, heavy grip training. Not that just the wrist curls and the reverse wrist curls, no, I'm talking about training like an arm wrestler or a competitor of grip sport, meaning crushing strength. Maybe you want to get some uh, captain for crush grippers, open hand strength, basically using thick bars, pinching strength, tearing strength, bending strength. I'm talking about all the different facets of grip strength, because what you'll find is that the best natural lifters, the strongest natural lifters in history had amazing grips. And if I can give you some examples, how about I reference the old time strongman, Louis C. One of the strongest guys of all time, stronger than some enhanced guys of today. Arthur Saxon, another mastermind. Eugene Sandow, same thing. And there's millions of old time strongmen out there who had terrific grips and it made them super duper strong. Because let me tell you something, right? The grip is where the Golgi tendon organ will start. If you have a weak grip and you try grabbing onto something, that's going to signal to your brain not to lift that weight off the floor. And if I can give you an example, how about we compare a two inch bar deadlift versus a one inch bar deadlift. You'll find that if your deadlift is around 500 pounds, you'll probably have a very hard time doing 250 off the floor with a two inch fat bar. Why? Is it because your posterior chain is weak or is it because grip is a limiting factor? Clearly it must be the grip and because your grip is weak in that position, the goal guy tendon organ sends a signal to your body saying do not pick this up. Likewise, how come you can lift a lot more weight when you throw on straps? Say your rack pull, once you get the sixth place, it starts slipping out of your hands. Well, that's, that's when you're throwing the straps. You're throwing the straps, next thing you know, you're pulling seven plates. This is the premise behind the Golgi 10 organ. If you can increase your grip strength, you will immediately be able to lift more weight than every single exercise imaginable. This applies to the bench press, this applies to the deadlift, it applies to rows, it applies to pulls, it applies to every pushing and pulling movement. Not necessarily the legs, that's not gonna really help you that much. But anything that requires like upper body strength, you can sure as hell bet that grip strength will make or break you. Like I said, the strongest lifters I ever knew in my life, they all had really, really big forms, okay? See my forms? Pretty big, right? They're 14 and a half inches at five foot five in height. I believe that my forms are the key to my strength. And I truly believe that I'll be lifting some super heavy weight because of these forms. I really, really believe that. I think I'll overhead press over two plates. I think I'll rack pull over 800 pounds. I have a lot of good potential because I'm desensitizing the Golgi 10 organ through direct grip work. So start training like competitive grip sport or an arm wrestler and you'll find that it really, really helps when you try to pull weights out the floor. And if you don't believe me, like I said, compare it to the straps. Why can you lift more weight with straps? Because the GTO is no longer a concern. So start hitting those forearms very, very hard. Second tip, incorporate partial reps. See guys, a lot of people believe that partials don't work for raw lifters or partials are worthless because you're not working through a full range of motion. But what they fail to understand is that you are developing the tendons and ligaments better than if you did full range of motion exercises. And that's where the strength potential is gonna come in. If you're doing a thousand pound rack pull, what do you think is happening to your entire body? Your forearms are gonna get way stronger because you gotta hold that, your upper back's gonna get stronger, your traps are gonna be pulling down with this extremely heavy weight, your abdominals are gonna get bigger, your lower back's gonna get stronger. You're holding a thousand pounds in your hands. What do you think happens when you're doing rack pulls with a thousand and then you try deadlifting six plates? The weight's gonna feel light as fuck because you strengthen, number one, you strengthen the joint angle at the top. So it's gonna be easier. You're gonna be in a better mechanical position once you start pulling on the floor. And also, you thicken the tendons and ligaments. And this is a secret of old time strongmen, okay? Old time strongmen, they would often lift, like instead of deadlifting with 45 pound plates, they would have very large object, objects. So it become like a block pull or rack pull. So my advice to you is 
start using partial reps, very stiff and high. So for overhead pressing, you want to push below the throat, at the, at the chin, nose, forehead, even above. You want to use many different heights. For your bench, same thing. You want to pin press different heights. You want to use boards. You want to do push presses for overhead pressing. You want to use partial reps for deadlifts. You want to do block pulls below the knee, at the knee, above the knee. You want to use closed grip, wide grip. You want to use uh, cheating rows, non-cheating rows. That's how you have to train to desensitize the Golgotha tendon organ because if your tendons and ligaments thicken up, that's going to register in your body that you're able to lift this weight. Because like I said, the example before, the 1,000-pound rack pull. If you do 1,000 pounds and then you try lifting 500, your body thinks, oh shit, I've already had 1,000. My connective tissue, my body can handle 1,000. My nervous system can handle 1,000. So what the fuck is 500? And you'll find this is true 100% of the time. Partial reps raise your full range of motion lift. And let me tell you something else. Who defines what a partial rep is? Who, does, who defines what a full range of motion lift is? Last I checked, it refers to one's anthropometry. For example, a deadlift. A real deadlift would be your hands going to your toes. That's a full range of motion deadlift. Yet the powerlifters say that you have to have 45 pound plates at that specific height. Who determines that this is the correct form? Uh, for a tall guy, it might be like really, really easy. You know what I'm saying? It might feel like a block pull because their arms are so goddamn long. So I don't like to think of this is the only way to do range of motion. No, I think partials are great. They overload your nervous system. It develops your connective tissue. Uh, your tendons, your ligaments, better than full range of motion lifts, and it's really giving you a better strength potential. Same thing for the bench, man. If you're like doing uh, pin presses with 500 pounds, what do you think happens when you try unracking three plates? It's light because you develop everything in your triceps, your pecs, everything had to develop for the partial lift. So, incorporate partials is a secret of all time strongman lifters, and you will desensitize the Golgotha tendon organ, therefore extending your natural potential. You can really get super super strong just off partial lifts because the overload is there it's undeniable and then lastly the final way of desensitizing the Golgotha tendon organ is by using bands because bands whenever you slap them over a barbell you create what is known as overspeed eccentrics this is the term that louis simmons coined basically the bands are pulling you down faster than the speed of gravity which enables a super powerful stretch reflex which basically rebounds the weight right off your chest in a bench press for example so you'll find this is actually teaching your go guy 10 organ to desensitize. You'll never, when a guy does band presses, he's never gonna fail off the chest. It's impossible. Even if he does a pause, you'll fail somewhere in the middle. You do, you do not fail off the chest with bands. That's because the go guy 10 organ is overriding very, for a very small amount of time. So when you go down super fast, boom, you have no choice but to react at that exact moment. Otherwise, you tear all kinds of shit. So it gives you a little rebound because of overspeed eccentrics, and you get the benefits of overloading the go guy 10 organ. So what do you think happens when you take off the bands? Typically, you're stronger off the chest. So yeah, I do suggest that you start working with bands, man. And keep in mind also that bands is kind of like a partial rep. Like it accommodates, like it's accommodating resistance in other words. So if you do deadlift with bands, right, it's going to be normal off the bottom. But as you get closer to the top, it becomes a rack pull. So it's like a full range deadlift plus a rack pull. And as I discussed previously with the partial reps, when you overload your body like that, you are building the tendons and ligaments. So my advice is to start benching with bands. Benching with bands is giving you like a pin press at the top. In other words, that's exactly what you need, right? Uh, deadlift with bands is doing the same thing. It's giving you the upper back benefits, the trap benefits, uh, just the pulling down in general. Squatting with bands is probably going to do the same thing as well, although not so much the same. Uh, even curling with bands, rowing with bands, everything that you do with bands makes you stronger because it accommodates resistance. And accommodating resistance is going to desensitize the cool guy 10 organ. That's why you'll never see a guy fail a weight off the chest or out of the hole when he does uh, band work. It's always at the top, all right? So that's my advice for you. If you want to get stupid strong, unlock your natural potential, use the three things that I discussed in this video. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. There's some good stuff. And now I got some great bloopers for you. So let's get right to it. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. And the theory is as follows. If you could desensitize the gold guy tendon organ, then you will unlock your natural potential. Fuck you and your fucking planes and your goddamn lawnmower, you motherfuckers. Of all the goddamn times I go to film on the fucking park, I got these cocksucking pieces of shit that are fucking mowing the lawn, who mows the lawn at this goddamn time. Why are there so many fucking airplanes here? I'm trying to film a video for you, shit. Fuck. <sighs> Fuck, man. Fuck, what was I at? I can't do this. It's too much. Fucking airplane, you cocksucker. There's all kinds of wind. I'm trying to film here, bitch. God damn it. 
Seriously, no joke, guys. I must have seen like 10 fucking lawnmowers. There's three of them right in front of my face. There's like a bunch of workers here. I don't know what the hell is going on here. This car is passing by left and right. This is just the worst day to film. So, yeah, you're going to have to see me indoors again. Sorry, guys.